Hello everyone, I'm Mike Anderson from Collision Advice and this is my great friend Danny Gredenberg from the DEG. And we are so excited to be working with SCRS to bring you a brand new series of quick tips to help you to boost your business. Today, we are gonna talk about something called EV isolation. Now I gotta tell you, the first time I heard that, I was like, what do you mean by that? But luckily, we have a great resource and a great guest with us today, Jeff from iCar. Jeff, tell us about EV isolation. All right, thank you, Mike. So all of these electric vehicles and even the hybrids, they take and they use an isolated or a floating high voltage system. And what this means is that high voltage battery that's in that vehicle, both the positive and the negative, do not connect to the chassis of the vehicle in any way. Now it's really difficult when you're looking at a vehicle to actually see the, the inner workings and how things are configured. And that's where we've got this training prop, which allows us to take and better see that, you know, make believe this is a high voltage battery down here. In there, that high voltage battery is isolated from the metal case. Now the metal case is a really critical component in this, and the metal case that you see on all these modules is a very critical component. But you'll notice the connectors that come out for the high voltage coming out, going from the high voltage battery to a distribution block, to a, a DC to DC converter, to a PTC, which is a heater, and the inverter unit down here. Those are all very well insulated, and they also have shields on the outer casings of the cables underneath the outer orange insulation. So essentially what that means is that all of that high voltage, you'll never touch it unless there's something damaged or there's a compromised component. And that's very, very critical to the safety of these vehicles for the uh, technicians as well as the operators of the vehicles. Uh, another neat component to this is that the way they set these systems up, if there were an internal fault, the concept is that if the high voltage positive shorted internally to this case, well, you're a bird on a wire. Now, technically, you think, oh my gosh, I'm going to touch the car and make it electrocuted. No, you're not. If there was a fault in a different module on the negative, the concept of bonding comes in. And so at that point in time, essentially, you're shorting out that high voltage. And as long as that bonding, and they do redundant bonding in these vehicles, is intact, it's going to blow that high amperage fuse that's in that battery. It keeps everybody safe. But this is something that's extremely important to understand those concepts as you're dealing with these vehicles. They're becoming more popular by the day. And uh, it's something that takes specialized test equipment to verify isolation and ensure that things are in place. The vehicles do monitor this during operation. In some cases, they may actually do the monitoring test right after shutdown, whenever the vehicle's been on a drive cycle. But uh, again, this is something that's uh, very important for the techs and folks out there in the industry to consider whenever they're dealing with these vehicles. Well, I appreciate it, Jeff. And I gotta tell you, when I first saw this, I was thinking like this looked like something from back to the future. But here's what I will tell you, not back to the future, but going forward in the future, it's gonna be critical that as an estimator that we research the OMA repair procedures in regards to EV vehicles. So ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Jeff, thanks for joining us today, and we hope you enjoyed today's tip. If you find these tips helpful, please subscribe, like, and share, and comment below for any future suggestions. Thank you for watching.